He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. The Holy Spirit of God is always talking, but man does not hear the voice of God. They are not listening. They are too busy listening to the voices of this world that call to them on a daily basis. The greatest need in the churches today is for spiritual discernment. You have to desire it. Discernment in the last days, too many in the churches do not understand the things of God because they are those things that are spiritually discerned. God will give us the spirit of wisdom and understanding to discern. We need it more now in these last days as ever before. As we draw near to the return of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, discernment for the days of our Lord Jesus Christ, to discern the signs of the times. In this world every day, there is so much deception. No one knows what is truth or a lie. Everyone is in a state of confusion. And we know that God is not the author of confusion. We know that is of the enemy. For we know and have the spirit of truth and the words of truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one's going to the Father but by Jesus Christ. Through the veil of the flesh of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ can we go boldly to the throne of God and to the presence of God. Hebrews 10, 19, and 20. John 14 and verse 6. Here we go, church. Here we go. The butter and the honey on the bread. In Genesis 3 and 15, the seed of the woman is promised. This is salvation. Before they were ever driven out of paradise, salvation was promised. And they all knew one thing, that the seed of the woman would destroy the head of the serpent. His powers, his authority would be destroyed. So the devil could only bruise the heel of the seed of the woman in Genesis 3 and 15. That meant that the devil would be attacking the feet of Zion. Ephesians 6 and 15 tells us to have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So what is the devil trying to do? Take peace from off the earth. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. That's what Isaiah tells us. Zion, transformation upon the feet of Zion. God will transform our feet into a people invincible. Micah 4 and 13, Zion's feet are brass because our horn, our king, is iron. He is strong. He will rule the people in the last days with a rod of iron. Iron being strong. Our king is strong. Transform the city of holiness because we are a city. Jesus said we are a city set on a hill. A city of holiness an appointed place where the Lord will protect his people from the evils in this world. The watchers are to wake up and put on your strength for the move of God, to cry over the churches, to cry over the nations, to cry over your nation, Zion. Cry over America. Pray for her. Pray for God to move in our time, in our day, in our generation, as the days of heaven upon the earth. Pray for America. Zion, how beautiful are your feet upon the mountain. Your feet are brass. 
Micah 4 and 13. They are strong. Romans 10 and 15 and Isaiah 52 and 7 tells us that the feet. How beautiful are the feet that bring glad tidings and that proclaim salvation. God is saying to Zion, Thy God reigneth. God is still on the throne, church. He has not been dethroned yet. No one possesses that power to take the throne away from God himself. Ephesians 5 and 27, the future glory of Zion, the eternal church, Psalms 132 and verses 13 and 14, the resting place. Deuteronomy 11 and 21, the days of heaven upon the earth, our days shall be multiplied long life. 1 Corinthians 15, 24 through 26, we have a king, Zechariah 14 and 9, that will be king over all the entire earth. And he is our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and he is our king. Our king is coming with power and great authority of God, and he will destroy all power, all rule, and all authority of the dragon and the beast and the false prophet. The enemies will be put under his feet of Jesus Christ. Revelation 10 and 2, under the feet of the angel. The beast of the sea is under the feet of the mighty angel that came down. The beast of the earth is under the other foot. Because it is time for God to bruise the powers and the authority of the serpent's head. And he will bruise them under our feet. Romans 16 and 20. The peace of God will crush Satan under our feet. Our enemies will be crushed under the rule and reign of Jesus Christ with his church. Revelation 2 and 27, Genesis 3 and 15, 1 John 3 and 8. The sons of God were created to destroy the works of the devil. Satan lost his grip and his power and his authority. In his power of death, Hebrews 2, 14 and 15, when Christ rose from the grave. Jesus Christ and his church will gain a victory. Truly what the devil feared most. Remember the word tells us in the book of Job. Job said, what I feared most was what came upon me. That's exactly what will happen to the devil. The dragon, the old serpent. What he feared most, to lose all his power, his grip over the nations. He will lose it because Jesus Christ in his church will gain great victory. And he will take the power and the authority and the rule and the reign in 1 Corinthians 15 and 24. And he will destroy the last enemy, which is death, 1 Corinthians 15 and 26. And that last enemy to be destroyed is death. Christ has already conquered death when he died on the cross. Read the book of Isaiah 52 and 7 on Zion, Hebrews 12, 22 and 23, Psalms 48, 1 through 3. Zion brings forth the message of peace and hope and eternal life. We are citizens of the new Jerusalem in Revelation 21 and 2. Be not conformed to the pattern of this evil world. You are to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, by putting on the helmet of salvation, by putting on the mind of Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians 2 and 16. We have his mind. Philippians 2, 5 through 8. We no longer think on fleshly things the way the world thinks or behaves. 
Lord, grant me and my household with the wisdom from above. Let our minds, our thoughts be in alignment with the mind of Jesus Christ. Allow us to have this mind that we may know the will of God. In Jesus Christ, most holy name I pray. We already know the fleshly mind is an enemy against God, Romans 8 and 7. Lord, transform the feet of Zion. God will transform his people to be invincible. Your horn is iron. Your feet are brass. You are strong and invincible. Your holiness unto the Lord. The watchers wake up and put on strength, ready for the move of God. What do your feet look like, Zion? Are your feet beautiful? Do they proclaim salvation? Zion, it's time to shake the dust off of your feet. Free yourself from the chains of the darkness of this world and every weight that so easily besets you. For who the Son has set free is free indeed. You are free, Zion. You are not in bondage to the death of this world. Jesus has set you free from bondage. Romans 8 and 2. We are free. God has made you invincible. It's time to wake up, Zion. Don't you know by now that you were wonderfully made? You were created to reveal the wonders of God. For out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth out of Zion. Church, hear me now. Hear me now, church of the living God. Prepare your minds, your hearts for action. Having a sound mind. Spending time with the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer and worship. And meditating on the words of God. Having the mind of Christ. Putting on the helmet of salvation. And the breastplate of righteousness. Don't you know by now that Jesus is your high priest? And if you go to the book of Exodus. And you read on the breastplate. Exodus 28. The stones that are set in the breastplate of the high priest. Cover the heart of the priest. Jesus being your high priest, he has your stone set in his breastplate that covers his heart. This means that you are always upon his heart. He set you there. He set his treasure, the things that he loves, over his heart. Glory, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Lord, don't let me cry, because you know that is powerful right there glory to God hallelujah glory to God Lord you're on my heart too every day every day Lord don't let me cry just don't let me cry how beautiful is that Zion to know that your God loves you so much that your high priest loves you so much he set your stone in his breastplate of righteousness and he said it over his heart that you would always be on his heart because he loves you. People don't think about that. They don't even think about those things. You need to think on those things, church, and know how much God in Jesus Christ truly loves you. The love of God we cannot comprehend because we are in a fleshly body. You cannot comprehend the love of God. But we're evil. And we give good gifts to our children. If they ask for bread, we give them bread. We don't give them a stone. If they ask for meat, we give them meat and not a serpent. 
if we be an evil good gifts to our children, good gifts, how much more? I ask you how much more will your heavenly Father give unto you that ask? He will not withhold anything from you because he loves you. Spend time in prayer. Worship, meditating on the words of God, having the mind of Christ. To know the will of God and understand God's plan and his purpose and his will for you in this world. Not only in this world, but the world to come. Jesus went to prepare a place for you, not here, but in the new. Because you're a new creature in Christ. He prepared a new place for you. That we're to understand and to know the will of God. God loves us more than you and I can imagine. And we know that God is a God of restoration and he will restore this world for the thousand year reign of Christ. He will restore it. I've seen it in visions, church. It is beautiful to see the creation in the beginning. How beautiful it was. Read the book of Acts 15, 15 and 16. The book of Revelation 21 and 1. Bring in creation back into the glory of the image of God. Genesis 1 and 3. The light of God. Having the mind of Christ to know the deep things of God. The ability, the power to discern spiritual things. That the fleshly mind cannot understand or see. It cannot comprehend it. Because it is beyond this world. The fleshly mind only comprehends the things that are of this world. Well, you are not of this world. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. When you became a new creature in Christ, you're no longer of this world. Your flesh, You died to this flesh. Remember when you were baptized? So many forget that so quickly. The mind of Christ to know the deep things of God, the ability to discern spiritual things that the fleshly mind cannot understand. It cannot see it. It cannot comprehend it. It is not part of it. It is an enemy against God. It is high time you get rid of that stinking thinking. Cast it down to the ground. Renew your mind daily by putting on the helmet of salvation, the mind of Christ. We renew our mind with the word of God. Ezekiel 44 and verse 23 and 24 tells us to discern. We are to have spiritual discernment to discern the signs of the times. We might not know the day or the hour, but with spiritual discernment, you can discern the signs of the times. Hebrews 5 and 14 tells us that a mature, mature Christian eats the meat of the word, having their senses, your spiritual senses. Exercise to discern good and evil. We eat the word of God. That we can discern from good and evil. That we can refuse the evil and choose the good by eating the word of God. What are you eating? Too many are eaten of the apple of this world. They care more about the things of this world than the things of God. You, you're caring so much about something that is only temporal. It's only here today and in the fire tomorrow. It doesn't make any sense, but it's true. I'm not looking to the end of this world. I am looking to the beginning of a new world where there is no end. That's the part I have a place in. I'll never be sick. I'll never grow old. I'll never die. I'll never have to battle the enemy again. 
There'll be no enemies. It is a city of perfect peace and love. In the city where the Lamb is delight, you will be transformed into the glory of that light, of that city, the light of God and the light of the Lamb. You see, when the apostle said that he looked through the mirror to go from glory to glory, see, you didn't comprehend that. You didn't have the spirit of discernment. You could not see beyond your own fleshly mind. You could not see beyond. How are you going to look in through the mirror unless you have the spirit of discernment to look in through the mirror? He meant to go from glory to glory. You see, the body is the glory of the image of God. It bears the image of that body of God. But God is not a body, is he, church? No. You see, too many want to put God in a body, like you want to put him in a box. You have to understand that God is a spirit. He only created you a body to operate within this physical realm. But the apostle knows the revelation knowledge because he is the spirit of discernment. He has the Holy Spirit of God that speaks to him daily that reveals that revelation knowledge to him as well as I do. I know exactly what the apostle is saying. It is not the body. The true image of God is the purest of the brightness of his glory. Christ only transformed himself into the image of the Son because he's trying to cause you to understand something here. He's trying to cause you to understand that that's the only image of the greater light that he could compare to the glory of God. So he transformed himself into that light. But that was not the true image of the glory of God. It is the light in the book of Revelation 21 and 23. That's the glory that you're going to look into the mirror and you're going to go from glory to glory. See, in the thousand-year reign, you're going to have a body. Because you're still going to be operating within this physical realm. When you go into that new Jerusalem, you're going into a spiritual place. You're going into a new world, a new heaven that God has prepared. You're not going to need a body to operate there. You're going to be the pureness of the glory and the image of the Lamb, which is the light and the image of God himself. You see, when the apostles talk about going from glory to glory, they know right now that we are going from glory to glory. Even in the thousand-year reign, your body will bear an image of the glory of God as looking into a mirror. But the city that's made of glass is the reflection as looking through the glass. Are you getting me now, church? And to the glory that we shall be. See, you can't even comprehend that glory because you don't have anything to compare it to. That's why I has not seen ear has not heard neither has entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for those that love him you have nothing to compare it to like the Holy Spirit of God said to me one day if I tell you of the color blue and you have never seen the color blue before how will I explain how can I explain the color blue to you I said you got me there I agree. If I've never seen it, how are you going to compare it to anything that I can see? Well, that's what Christ is doing on the mountain of transfiguration here, church. Before his disciples and Moses and Elijah. I cannot show you the brightness of his glory. I cannot transform into it before you now. 
because there's nothing that you have ever seen that I can compare it to. So he transformed himself into the son. Boy, you just sit back and you think about his thinking. God is always thinking. And that's something that I have learned in my walk with God. That God is always thinking. And he wants you to think out loud. He wants you to think. He wants you to think on these things. Because that's the only thing that he could do. I'm going to be teaching next on uh, what Jesus said, well, what one of the apostles said on that mountaintop to Christ. It is amazing. The Holy Spirit of God is always teaching me. If I quit YouTube right now and I never came back to YouTube, I would definitely be a woman over here and my cup would be full and running over. Because whether I'm out on YouTube or rather I'm at home, no matter where I am in the car, I'm visiting, talking with people out on the streets, it doesn't matter where I am. Even laying in my bed at night, it doesn't matter. Nothing hinders the Holy Spirit of God from teaching me this amazing word because it is my heart's desire. I was eight years old when I said to God, I know you talk to people because all through your word, there are witnesses that they heard your voice. Teach me your words. And when he said to me, when the Holy Spirit of God said to me at eight years old, God looked down from heaven, Lord, don't let me cry. The Holy Spirit said to me at eight years old, and I'll never forget it as long as I live. God looked down from heaven. The Lord asked you not to let me cry. God looked down from heaven, and he saw you. And he said, you, I'm going to give my words to you. What a treasure. Truly, he gave me the greatest gift of all. And I dig deep in the earth. I dig deep in the word of God for that great treasure. Remember what I shared with you, what the angel said to me about digging? I will continue to dig in the word of God for the greatest treasure of all because it is my treasure. It is what my heart's desire. People ask me every day that I know in my walk with God, how did you get all this amazing revelation knowledge? Because I'm hungry for it. I showed God something about me. I showed him that I am a person determined and I cannot be stopped. Because I'll keep searching. I'll keep digging. I'll light the candle. I'll do whatever it takes. Whatever I have to do to have this amazing word. And because I continue to search the scriptures and I won't give up because I know there are always higher and deeper places in my God. And I'm willing to search them out. I'm willing to climb up the mountain after Jesus and say, Lord, what does that parable mean? I want to know. I got to know. I have to know. I won't stop until I know. Be determined, church. Be determined. Think on these things today. And you have a blessed and victorious day today. In Jesus Christ, most holy name we pray. And let the church say amen and amen. What are you willing to do, church? So many let foolish things stop them. They have bigger things to do, greater things, more plans in the world that they got to do. Your problem is, is you're not putting God first. I don't allow anything to be first in my life. 
God is always first. The Word of God is first. There are times that I've had invitations to go here and do this and do that with so many people. But when the Holy Spirit of God calls me, I will set everything aside. Remember Mary and, and Martha? The one that was so busy and had so much to do. You see, there's times that you got to lay things aside to be in the presence of God. What are you willing to do? What are you willing to give up? Are you willing to put God first in your life? You're going to have to. He demands it. God is only going to meet you as far as you're willing to meet him. That's why he watches us. He wants to see how determined you are. There's too many lazy Christians that want everyone else to do their work for them. But I am the work woman, and I am worthy of my hire. Think about that. Brother Preston said something to me not too long ago. He said, people are lazy. They want to come to you to hear the word of God. They want to get the revelation knowledge. They don't want to have to suffer. They don't want to have to pay the price that you have paid. They don't want to take the time, the time that you spend every day in the presence of God. They don't want to take that time. They want to come to you. They want to open the package. They want to pour it in and add a little water and stir and voila. They have it. I said this is true, but I am willing to share the meat of the word that the Holy Spirit of God shares. I look at it like this, my brother. As long as the children are eating the meat, then I am rejoicing in the spirit over them. It doesn't matter how you get it, but that you get it. Amen. That's my, that's my thinking. I want you to have it. And I'm giving it to you freely. Because it was freely given to me. Holy Spirit didn't ask anything of me when he gave it to me. That's how God is. All you have to do is reach out and receive it. God wants you to have it. I want you to have it. But take the time to spend in the presence of God and in his word. Great is your reward. God bless you, my dear precious friends. In Jesus Christ's most holy name, we pray and let the church say amen and amen. I love you, my dear precious friends. Keep me in your prayers today, and you will remain in mine. Have a blessed day, church.